So in the previous video, we figured out how to solve second order differential equations. Um, and so now, of course, we're going to apply that. Uh, now, the easiest way to do that is to look at, uh, at problems from physics where the um, F equals MA equation immediately gives us a second order differential equation because the acceleration is the second derivative of um, the position and typically the force will be dependent on the position. So let's look at, for example, the pendulum. The pendulum has a differential equation which looks like this, where m is the mass of the pendulum, g is the um, gravitational acceleration, h the length of the pendulum, i the moment of uh, um, inertia, and then the angle at which the pendulum is hanging is theta. And so usually we solve this um, for the idealized pendulum when the when the, um, the swings of the pendulum are small. So when the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta because theta is small. Um, so that's, when we, if we solve it that way, that's when we get just the sine or the cosine, the periodic swinging around, um, around uh, the, the theta equals zero solution. Um, so that's what we get for T ideal. That's for the ideal pendulum. Um, so now of course we can solve this um, differential equation, the second order differential equation um, with our numerical techniques. So we'll have um, our F for the pendulum, which is our vectorized right hand side for the differential equation. So we'll again, we'll start from zeros like I and then Y prime um, zero, which is our theta prime, will just be the second component or the, the, the index one component for Y. And then y prime one, which is theta double prime, which will be minus mgh over i times the sine of, uh, of y, y zero, which is theta. Okay, so that's our function. We start at um, pi over four, 45 degrees, um, and uh, we'll just let it solve that um, differential equation and plot the result. And we'll also plot here um, for lint space uh, from uh, minus 0.8 to 0.8, we'll plot the, the solution of the, um, the ideal pendulum. So let's see how that looks. So we get our solution here. We start simulating at minus, at, at, at time zero. Um, and uh, at that point, the angle is, uh, is, is pi over four. And so we go through the um, theta equals zero and we swing out to the, to the other side and after one period we end up here um, and so the ideal period for the ideal pendulum as you can see is a little bit smaller um, so this is what we would have found if we just limited ourselves to only theta um, of only small angles of theta where we can use an approximation that sine theta is equal to theta but because we can now solve the differential equation um, numerically without, without having to make those uh, simplifications in order to be able to solve it analytically, we actually get a, a result that's much more accurate. And as you can see here, the, um, the period of oscillation actually um, is different in what we find here. Um, so, uh, so it's important that we are able to, uh, to solve these differential equations, these second order differential equations, because it actually does give us different results. Um, and of course, where does this uh, difference, re different result come from? Um, well, what we actually ignore if we replace the sine of theta with just theta are these theta to the third, theta to the fourth, uh, uh, sorry, theta to the fifth um, terms. And those terms are of course going to um, cause a, a restoring force that is going to be smaller because of the fact that this term happens to have a negative sign um, as the first, uh, first component. So that's one example where we can use our second order numerical solutions or our numerical solution for our second order differential equations to get results that we would otherwise not be able to get. Um, that wh where in particular, um, if we use the analytical approaches and we make approximations such that we can use analytical approaches, we find results that are too small um, or in other words, incorrect. The other place where we're going to use this is when we calculate drag on a projectile, um, which again is a difficult problem to solve um, analytically. And we'll see that in the next video.